Hi, um, this is me, Caleb Bullock. Um, a little awkward recording this on my phone, but um, I tried to recall, record it on my webcam um, via YouTube, and um, there's no way that you can record on your webcam to post on YouTube anymore. So this is what I'm going to be posting on YouTube. Um, the first thing that needs to be talked about is um, the teachers that I've observed and those kind of things, um, what I've seen from them and um, how their planning reflected as they taught the lesson. Um, I, I was able to interview two teachers. One was my aunt, um, who teaches in New Jersey, and I was able to see her teach as well. And one um, who was somebody from my university who teaches at a school who teaches special education here in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. And um, you could definitely tell that both were very, um, they were, uh, both had thought thought out of plans, uh, thought thought of plans. They both carried out their plans very well, and um, they had everything executed to a T, which is essential because I I was able to observe other classrooms and there were teachers who were kind of fumbling around. The students weren't paying attention and they weren't engaged, and um, I think it's a really big thing that's going to kind of lead into my next topic that I'm going to talk about. I apologize. Um, what are some of the most effective lessons you have observed? Um, one effective lesson I observed was from my aunt who um, was teaching about um, a social studies topic um, of the Revolutionary War. And um, she engaged the children with um, certain visuals projected on the screen and um, other resources as well, having primary documents um, on their desk. And the kids, uh, they could feel the history, and they could also see the history. And they were they were in elementary school, I think fourth or fifth grade. Um, so it, it was definitely evident that they were engaged, that they were participating. participating. And when they had their exit ticket, um, they, su they succeeded. They did very well. And that was incredibly encouraging and cool to see how an effective lesson works. Um, and that obviously kind of plays out into what made it effective, um, engagement. Having children um, being focused on the topic at hand is just so essential, so important. Um, I think we can relate as as people and like when we were younger, um, how we didn't learn as much when we weren't engaged. Um, and I think another thing too to tie into that is teacher involvement. And um, I think we all know that there are teachers who are more involved in their students' lives and teachers who are less. And the ones who are more uh, will, will be much more effective than the ones who are not. And um, that, that also includes behavior. Like if you're going to a kid's soccer game or basketball game, they're more likely to reciprocate feelings of love and uh, attention rather than dismiss you and count you as, as, as garbage. So that's very important. Um, how do they engage students in the learning? Um, like I just said, there were physical hard copies. Um, instead of just uh, going off on a lecture, or reading off a textbook, there was a lot of um, hands-on material, which is just so vital. Uh, were they teacher-centered or student-centered? They were student-centered. Um, I think teacher-centered comes more into college um, when you are just giving a lecture, where it's kind of what the teacher wants you to know about the teacher and the teacher's opinion. But when it comes to elementary school, secondary, middle school, um, it's got to be student-centered and focused on their own learning, their own teaching. Did the teacher use project-based learning? Not necessarily, because they were younger grades. Um, but I talked to my aunt, and she said that yes, she would use project-based learning if she was teaching high schoolers or middle schoolers. So there's that as well. Um, how was technology used, like I said, already mentioned? And what innovative practices have you observed? And... The last thing is formative assessments.